I am going to uh, just uh, dedicate this uh, presentation, but only the good parts of it, to Alan Flagg, who uh, has done a lot for me personally. Um, so anything you like, think of Alan. Anything you don't like, I'll feel awful about myself and go to REB uh, therapy, <laughs> all right? Um, the reason uh, I have this image on the lower left is this artist, this performance artist. I don't know if you've ever seen this guy perform, Onyx Ashanti. Uh, he's hooked up with iPhones and, and all kinds of things in his mouth that's hooked up to a computer. And based on how he moves, he creates music. So he's dancing and he's creating music, and it's terribly seductive like everything else is. Now, this quote really struck me when I was doing this, creating this presentation. Uh, the, the film uh, Coin is Quasi, uh, by, um, the, that was a Philip Glass uh, 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 soundtrack uh, by Godfrey Reggio, says, uh, our language is in a stage of vast humiliation. It no longer describes the world in which we live. And I think the GS guy here, uh, the GS goon, would say, hey, you, has our language ever described the world in which we live? Uh, and um, I, I want to kind of do a quick rebuttal to this, um, because I really don't feel that, and I think we all would agree with that, right? That our language uh, has never really described the world in which we actually live. Um, a good um, analogy of this is, you know, uh, even books as we know it are now, you know, we're buying things electronically. This is um, how I'm going to quickly uh, go through this. I'm going to just give you kind of as a writing instructor uh, in the corporate world. I haven't taught in college level now for about 12 years or so. But for the last 18 years, 19 years in the corporate world, um, give you kind of like what I see is going on in the writing world. Uh, give you what the education establishment response has been, and I think it's been a good response. And then some things that I feel, as I have been a student of general semantics through all of you, uh, what I have been doing and I think we could all be doing in our instruction. Uh, so let's start with the writing context. I guess this is what the way we all saw writing, and I think we would all agree that this is writing now, right? Um, I was at B.B. Uh, King's, the Jazz and Blues Club on, on 42nd Street uh, last year, listening to this really hot Latin band, uh, Eddie Palmieri's La Perfecta. I was holding my wife's hand and sitting right next to us was a couple that looked just like that. And uh, I was saying, this music is on fire, man. How can they be doing that? They had just met, they were on a first date, and they were texting right in the middle of the show. And I wanted to get my wife's reaction to that, but when I turned to her, she was on her Blackberry texting her friend about how much of a good time she was having. And I wanted to like say, how could you do that? But then I got a text message on my droid from a cousin in Malta, which is a six hour time difference. So that must have been three in the morning. And I was saying, my God, what could Rose want from me? And now suddenly we're all out of it. And I, I think that everybody would have to win that. Uh, anybody who's been tethered at any point, that we're all sort of uh, in that world, at least at one time. And this is probably the reaction I had at that <laughs> very moment. So uh, I want to, um, you know, I heard uh, this morning your uh, reference to um, uh, the uh, Nicholas Carr article. Uh, and I have to admit that this is true for me. I do. I have to admit this. No one loves reading, I don't think, more than I do, or I love it just as much as you do. But I kind of agree with what he said here. And this is the end of the paragraph. <laughs> And I got kind of squeamish when I read that. Uh, who cannot read this from where they're sitting? OK. All right, good. That's about the smallest the, the text will get. It's an article called, Is Google Making a Stupid? The funny thing is if you go to Google and you just type in, is G-O, that's the first thing that pops up, is Google making a stupid. Isn't that great? All right. So uh, you know, in, in, in thinking about the world I'm in and all the articles I've been reading over the last few years that uh, have really affected me. There was an article a few years back, Ancient History, 2006, five and a half years ago. Um, it was called Scan This Book. And the author was saying that you know everything in the world is going to be scanned. Everything is going to be retrievable with a handheld device. Um, and he treated scanning as if it were some kind of moral imperative. 
and in a way I agree, you know, because, for example, we have John out there in uh, Evergreen, Colorado, right, John? And, you know, you might not have immediate access to things that I might go into the New York Public Library. So print is losing its appeal and uh, copyright is under siege. And, of course, this is all um, affecting us. Um, the other thing, and I'm kind of doing this quickly because I'm recapping a lot of what I heard today. We heard about, um, uh, over the last two days now, um, co the concept of copyright, for instance, that uh, now uh, nothing is private anymore. Sherry talked about that in great depth yesterday. And uh, yeah, the name of the article is The Web Means the End of Forgetting. Nothing is really ever deleted. Once we send it, we can't control it. Uh, businesses use the web to investigate applicants and employees. And this is where I disagree uh, with, uh, uh, maybe it's not a disagreement with Sherry, but it's just, a, I, I really do believe that the law just can't keep up mm. with the dynamism of the web. And that's why I don't know if there's anything we can legislate here, okay? Um, and, you know, we keep getting seduced by the remarkable creations of technology. Um, you know, new bacteria, plant species, clone animals, new cures for diseases, reduced pesticides. These things are inarguable. Of course, they're probably causing cancers as well and other things. But, uh, you know, we are now faced with the, in the very concept of what constitutes human life. And I think that this is all very important in the context of uh, thinking about what words mean. Um, and this is a, uh, a typical writing student I might have, okay? Um, I think Sherry brought this point up too yesterday. She was talking about artificial intelligence. If you start using these things, you can't use human logic. You have to use machine logic. You really do to understand these things. You know, these things now are at the point where there are no um, uh, devices, uh, there are no manuals. You have to just kind of figure it out figure out how does the darn thing work and start thinking like it. And this is a typical student I might have in one of my classes. She'll say, thanks for the tip on fluent writing. I really found that useful. But what I really need is to fit um, um, my report to my boss in a 500 character field. Can you help me do that? You know? And I said, well, but you're, you're talking more than 500 characters here. <laughs> and, 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 but, but these are the confines in which people are writing today. Okay? It's inarguable. All right, um, and, and then to me, this was like an ultimate. Is anybody here, raise your hand if you're familiar with 3D printing? Okay, way more than I am then, I'm sure. As, especially Amy, when you raise your hand, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, uh, but uh, you know, when I was reading about 3D printing, basically, I think it's some kind of resin that you could put in a printer, some kind of uh, 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 synthetic material. You design something on your computer, a pair of gloves, heart transplant materials, right. aircraft parts. Interlocking gears. Yeah, interlocking gears on, air, on aircraft. So what's happening now is that, you know, just like nobody has to tell me what to buy, I don't have to leave my house to do all my shopping. Uh, soon that's even going to apply to clothing and so many other things. So how could you not be seduced, Sherry Turkle? How could you not be seduced by this stuff? Okay, in fact, this is the way I feel about it, you know? Uh, we can't become like Henry David Thoreau unless we be seen like um, the Unabomber. Thanks. Okay, so has writing changed? Yeah. So um, this is uh, the way I think we are right now, you know? Uh, the, the, the allegory of the cave, um, you know, we have become insulated, we have become disconnected. And um, uh, here's my response to uh, Reggio when he says, uh, our language is in a state of vast humiliation. I just think it's in a state of siege. And that doesn't, you know, when you're in a state of siege, you get defensive. You know, you start defending yourself. So this is what uh, the National Council of Teachers of English has uh, done. They recently published an article called Writing in the 21st Century, which is just like the name of this uh, paper. Uh, and, uh, you know, everyone is an author. If you just have to go on to the one of the 13 billion blogs that are out there, you would see that. Everyone can evaluate. If you don't believe that professor's in the room, go to ratemyteacher.com. Uh, <laughs> information is easily accessible. And the thing that really struck me, the Council of Teachers of English, the guardians of the English language, right? These are the high school teachers, the college professors. Words are not enough. Words are not enough. So this is what their conclusion was. Describe new writing models emerging from the internet. 
design a curriculum from K to graduate school that accounts for these models and develop new models of teaching for this curriculum. Now, um, Colin, you said something this morning that, uh, you know, you teach on the college level. You were thinking of talking about computers uh, uh, in the classroom. And my situation is a little different, teaching in the corporate world. Uh, I want to get to that, but I think I'm going to wrap this up by just giving you some GS contributions, possible GS contributions. I think the opportunity right now is that we could refine that game plan of the National Council of Teachers of English by slipping in some GS principles. I've been doing it for as long as I've been a member of GS. And I think with increasing slickness, because without ever mentioning the words GS, which would turn people off. First of all, I do allow computers in the, I, I encourage it in fact. I'll even allow this if people are really good at writing with, with this stuff. I do allow it. I, I'm not going to say, you know, don't use the stuff that you have to write, you know, that you're used to writing in. If people write most of their stuff by a BlackBerry, then they should be writing with a BlackBerry. I have no problem with that. I refer them to useful online resources. I encourage technology for in-class writing. And these are four little tips that I might give along the way, avoiding absolutes. I'm showing you right now um, uh, images from a fantastic presentation by Sir Ken Robinson, which I saw on, um, uh, on TED.com. But, I mean, he talks in so many absolutes. I can just go on and on and on with that. But it's so seductive. You just look at this, and who cares what he said? This is cool, man, you know? This is really beautiful stuff. And I'm not going to read some of those quotes because it just might take too long. But, you know, he'll say something like, if you ask a group of kindergartners something, they will all raise their hand. They will all, right? Uh, and. Uh, you know, it's funny. I'm sort of doing the same thing, right? I'm having you focus on visual images while I'm talking, uh, while I'm using language. But um, we got to be really careful about this technology in that respect. But we still have to measure the words very carefully. Second one, expose abstractions. Uh, these are typical words that I have seen written in my writing classes from IT professionals and so on. Uh, and they get a good kick out of it when I... Um, show them this uh, scene on the beach, this love scene, and the man says to the woman, oh, sweetheart, please be advised that based on an economy of scale and the frit quo, no, uh, frit pro, uh, uh, quo nature of our interfacing, my cardiac muscle at optimal operational reliability is delivered to you on a continual basis. And, <laughs> and, and she says, it should be noted that after a comprehensive longitudinal analysis of your cross-functional throughputs uh, throughout the uh, parameters of our deployment, it has been decided to leverage my immaterial substance for you within the terms of our agreement. I gave her my heart, she gave me her soul. That's basically what that boils down to. And they laugh and they realize it and they at least can qualify a little more what they write. And they do. They do try to qualify it. So if they are going to say something like unique value proposition to an outside reader, they will try to do that. Um, thanks to Marty, I learned a lot about uh, dating. I remember submitting an article to Marty, and Marty said to me, Phil, there's not a reference to um, general semantics in this. I said, yeah. And he said, well, Phil, can't you think of one? I said, no. And he said, this is all about dating. Do you remember that? And I said, OK, good. And I, I put it in. And I, I really do think it's helpful. I heard something like this on CNN, OK, comparing two speeches, one by each, and uh, of these two people. Not only is the date different, but I even think the same man over two periods are different. That, that one on the right is not Barack Obama, by the way. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a computer generation of what they'll think he'll look like if he does get reelected. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And he survives another four years. Okay, so, um, you know, uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, trying to, to make clear some of this language uh, we use in terms of absolutes and all of that, I give a few examples like, you know, when we say things like our inventory is a mess, uh, you can, uh, you know, do you remember highlights for children, boys and girls? Do you remember that? Okay. A gallant might say our inventory is 11% lower than the same period a year ago. Instead of we dominate our market, uh, but the, competi the competition did not enter the market until last year. So, uh, you know, uh, we, we're constantly looking for this in, in our writing classes. And finally, either or language. I want to leave you with this one slide because, uh, you know, we think of George Bush as having mastered that line, but uh, Lenin said it. That's a pretty good-looking picture of Benito Mussolini. He would have had me there. 
Uh, uh, but, you know, even Jesus Christ said that. Whoever is not with me is against me. And the reason I bring this up is uh, we're very convenient. Uh, we conveniently cherry pick. Uh, uh, you know, we go with our own biases. And those of us who may uh, uh, subscribe to one of these people uh, might overlook it. So we always need to be on the lookout for our own biases. Uh, and uh, at that, I'm going to give it to Richard. Thank you very much.